How's it going guys? My name is Jake Fogg and welcome back to episode number 39 of my Football Manager 2020 journey here today with Leeds United and today we've got the last two matches before we go on our little winter break due to the fact that it, obviously it's 2022 in game and we've got the Qatar World Cup which obviously as I'm sure every football fan around the world knows by now it's be, it is being played uh, November to December in 2022. Pretty stupid if you ask me but in terms of our Champions League match against Marseille that you can see is happening today it's quite simple the winner of the game will top the group also if we avoid defeat uh, we will top the group because of I think we've got one more point than them but ultimately we win we are top Marseille win they finish top and we're the away side so it's going to be quite tough and quickly as I'm talking about the World Cup let's just have a little look at this four players have been called up for the World Cup and well my favorite one of the lot Calvin Phillips I've been saying for ages it's absolutely criminal how he's only got one England cap in this game he's so so good I mean, if you just have a little look here, he's considered a leading Premier League player. He's valued at, what, £53 million, and he's only got one cap for England, but he has made the national team for the World Cup, so I'm pretty excited to see how he does if he can uh, get his foot in the door and hopefully find his place as an England regular. So that's nice to see, and obviously the fact that we've got, who else was it, Posh, which is an interesting one at Austria, doesn't play a huge amount for me, but Sistana, obviously my main centre-back really, and then Louis Montagnu, my hero, my mate, the young Romanian, going to be leading the line for Romania, which you absolutely love to see, but anyway, before we do get into the games, let's just quickly run you through the two games that have happened off of camera. So our first game came against Dortmund, our uh, penultimate game in the Champions League group stages, and we left it late. Mikic with a fantastic finish into, albeit, an open goal in the 90th minute. And then just one minute later, we managed to uh, we managed to add ourselves <laughs> a second goal. So, so long waiting to score one, and then two come along just like buses. Bogus this time finishing it into the bottom corner after a lovely little knockdown from Galena, where you can see we were the better team, a fully deserved win, meaning that out of our five Champions League group stage matches so far, we've won four of them, and that is, I couldn't really ask for more, well, I could ask for more, I could ask for five wins, but four wins from five matches in the Champions League, in our first Champions League campaign in this save is, I mean, it's mind-blowing, it's absolutely phenomenal. And then in our only other game, our league game uh, off camera, we played against Spurs and Montagnu finally ended his goal drought, scoring uh, from the penalty spot after about 15 or so minutes. But uh, Spurs did get themselves back into it very, very quickly. Emi Buendia getting on the end of a cross to uh, get things back onto level terms. But just after the half hour mark, you see Mikic ball out on the right hand side. Montagnu flicks it on and Bogus finishes it with some absolute power. Keeper was rooted to the spot. And then after this, the floodgates, I mean, it's safe to say that they opened. Mikic picked out Montagnu in the middle, grabbing his second goal of the game. Obviously, he got himself on for a hat-trick. So pleased for him. Obviously, he's not scored for a while. I think it was about 11 hours that he hadn't scored a goal. And well, there you see, he nods in his third goal, our, third, our fourth goal, gets himself the hat-trick. But I tell you what, he was not done there that's right Louis Montagnu managed to grab himself a fourth goal Galena with the ball in Montagnu volleyed it with his left foot past the keeper finishing with a 9.9 .9 rating you'd love to see it Louis Montagnu back in goal scoring form just before we go on a on a winter break which is far from ideal but obviously he's got the World Cup to play so hopefully um, he'll score a few goals in the World Cup as well and hopefully he'll score a few goals uh, in this episode and so that brings us on to our game today, away at Marseille. We are slight favourites. You can see both of us have already qualified. Uh, it doesn't make too much of a difference whether we finish first or second. I think either way, we're going to be playing some top, top quality teams. Although looking at the teams that are currently sat in second place, so I, I don't know, if can we play Spurs? I'm not 100% certain, but Spurs are currently sat in second. Celtic uh, currently sat in second as well. Well, Celtic have finished second. Leon have qualified in second. Roma have qualified in second. Um between Schalke or Man City to qualify in second there, I think, or maybe one of them could even sneak top. I'm not sure how the head-to-heads are. Uh, it's between Porto and Inter for second in that group, and then between Bayern Munich and Ajax for second in Group H, and then obviously the group winners, Man United, Liverpool, Real Madrid, PSG, Juve, Atletico, and Barcelona. And obviously we don't really want to face any of them in the next round, so obviously we want to win the group. We want to, we want to give ourselves as good of a chance as uh, as good of a chance of progressing in this competition as possible. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go all out. I'm going for the wing. Unfortunately, I'm going for the wing. I'm going for the win. Unfortunately, Alfonso Davies picked up a knock in the last game, so he is going to miss out today. Um, who am I going to bring onto the bench? I guess I'll bring Cooper onto the bench. Bring on a defender. 
But apart from that, I think I'm pretty, pretty happy with this lineup that we're going to be settling with. So it's Pavlenka in goal, Franceschi and Sistana at the back with Macalmont sat just in front of him. He's done uh, okay in the couple of games he's played as deep line playmaker. I initially brought him in for No and Kenner because Kenny was getting a little bit, I think he was injured actually for a game. So I brought him Macalmont. He's done well, so he's kept it. Uh, Leif Davis at left, back, uh, left wing back, Hickey right wing back, Bogus and Soderberg in the middle, Galeno on the left, Mikic on the right, and Montagnu up top as the lone striker. Let's see. If we can go on, we can win the group. And let's see if Montagnu can continue on from uh, where he left off in the last game. Obviously scoring four goals. I won't mind four goals again, but just one or two would do, Louis. Just don't let me down. As early on, we've got a free kick. Soderberg strikes it, and it just whistles past the post and goes behind for a goal kick. And now we've got a corner. Mikic plays it in. It is headed clear, but Mikic is going to pick up the loose ball. Takes past one, goes inside to McCallum on Franceschi on the ball now. Bogus, Montagnu, great ball through to Galeno. Is he going to strike? He is. It's off the post. It falls to Montagnu, and Montagnu gets himself a goal. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the strongest shot I've ever seen in my life. I think that is safe to say. He just kind of watch the ball just trickle over the line but we'll watch it in 3D see what happened Galeno hits the post Montagnu gets to it and I don't know whether it took a slight deflection or if he just didn't get much uh, didn't get very good contact on it but it did not travel very quickly at all and there you can see we are now sat four points ahead of Marseille sat in first place five wins and one draw as things stand I mean it's safe to say it has not been a bad Champions League campaign and it'd be interesting to see how far we can go as Bogus picks up the ball in the edge of the box. That's a fantastic ball, but Mikic's shot is saved at the near post by the keeper. But yeah, I'm really interested to see how far we can go in this competition. Obviously, last year we won the Europa League. I wasn't expecting it. I don't think we had particularly tough matches, but we, you know, we didn't have easy matches. But obviously, being in the Champions League, it's just a level above. You know, you're going to be playing your Bayern Munichs, you're going to be playing your PSGs, you're going to be playing your Barcelonas and Real Madrids. You know, they are just they're the next level of competition. So, if we can get ourselves um, an easier first knockout round tie and just get to the um, the second knockout round as Montagnu shot is blocked Bogus shot is also blocked as, ahead, as the ball is clear but yeah it'd be just be nice to you know not get knocked out in the first knockout round I think that's probably going to be my goal for the Champions League and that's a great ball Montagnu is bearing down on goal he's got a man to get past he does manage to fire a shot but it is straight into the hands of Hugo Lloris as a free kick comes in Jim C Jim City Jim City, what a name that is. Jim Jim City <laughs> with the header heads it over the bar. But with that being said, it's looking like there's going to be no further action before half time. And there we have half time. I'm just going to tell him I'm happy with your performance. I'm happy with the performance so far. Keep it going. Hopefully we can grab ourselves another goal. But if it stays like this, I don't really mind. As the first 10 minutes have passed, not much has happened. But we do now have a highlight. Zappa Costa going down the right wing. Dumps it off to Eng someone as Montagnu slides in and that is going to be a penalty. Oh, he went to VAR and it got given. Bernadetto steps up. Can Pavlenka be a hero? No, he cannot as the ball nestles into the bottom corner. And uh, just like that, Marseille have got themselves back on level terms. And uh, yeah, we are in nowhere near as good of a position as we were, well... A moment before we scored, before they scored that goal, I guess. But with just 20 minutes left, I think it's time to start thinking about a couple of changes. I'm going to take off Soderberg, bring on Ira Baron, swap him and Bogus round, and then I'm also just going to bring some fresh legs on. Get Garcia on that left hand side, just to kind of freshen it up on the wings going forward. Hopefully, give the Marseille defence a little bit to think about as they've actually just. Brought on a different centre-back. Interesting choice. And that is a great ball. Montagnu through one-on-one. -on -one, and he just puts it wide off the post. Great quick thinking from Franceschi, the centre-back, to uh, pick out Montagnu and put him through on goal. But unfortunately, we could not convert. But Bogus now has got the ball. Tries to slide it through, but it is intercepted. And now Marseille are coming on the attack. Udon forwards to Bernadetto. It's a good save from Pavlenka. Pavlenka, someone commented on my last video basically saying how Pavlenka has cost me a lot of uh, goals with his handling and first touch which I think is definitely fair but you see there one thing that you don't see and you don't he doesn't get as much credit for is some of the saves that he make like that right there was an absolutely phenomenal save and has potentially just secured us first place in the group and obviously it's the it, like you say it's the mistakes that get noticed it's the errors that he makes because when you're a goalkeeper you make an error that often leads to a goal but 
no one talks about the big saves and obviously you don't get to see all the big saves that he makes off of camera or I don't really or the big saves that happen when there's not been a highlight shown but with that being said full time has come around a very even game all in all but fortunately we come away with a point meaning that we are finishing top of the group um, I'm just going to say you've proved a lot of people wrong in avoiding defeat out there I'm not too disappointed with the fact that we couldn't get the win because all I really wanted was to top the group, get that first seed going into the uh, first knockout round of the Champions League. I'm going to look really. I'm pretty certain there's a seeding system for the first round of the Champions League knockouts. Uh, I'll be. I'll look very, very stupid if there isn't. But anyway, with that being said, unless anything interesting happens in between, I will catch you for the Fulham game. Right. So here we are for the Fulham game and also something I just realised I didn't actually point out at the start of it at the start of this episode going into today we are currently sat fourth again uh, in the Premier League currently sat on 24 points if we can win today it will see us leapfrog Chelsea because they've already played a game they lost to Manchester United meaning that we will be on 27 points and hopefully we will be on 27 points come the end of at the end of this episode and we'll be sat in third position but anyway I am actually going to make a, uh, a few changes here Oh, do, am I going to make a future? I was going to rest Hickey. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring Dallas on. He's been unfortunate. I'm also going to give um, I'm going to give Franceschi a little bit of a rest. I think uh, he's played a lot of football recently. And then going forward, uh, do I want to make many more changes? I'll take. I'll swap Soderberg and Ira Barron around. Put Ira Barron to advanced playmaker and have Bogus as the box to box midfielder. But apart from that, I think I'm pretty happy. With the lineup that I've selected, no, I'm not. I'm gonna start Garcia on the left-hand side and put Galeno on the right. Let's see if Garcia can uh, just do something. He's been unfortunate because I've not really had much of a chance to play him as a striker. Obviously, that is his natural position. But I just love Montagnu too much that I'm always a little bit apprehensive to play him. So he's been playing out on the wing mostly. Also because we're a bit, you know, we're we're missing a lot of players on the wing. So he has been pretty unlucky. But let's get into the game. Let's see what we can do. Can we can we come away with a win? Currently, I'm thirteenth place. Uh, I believe Fulham are. So hopefully, hopefully we can do the business. On paper, it's not a particularly difficult game, but obviously we have played a lot of football recently, a lot of midweek matches, and there we go. Montagnu has scored to put us in the lead. I'm not really sure <laughs> what happened there. The ball's just kind of bouncing around in the box, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, eventually, obviously, he just fell to Montagnu and he put it away. It bounced off about 17 different players. A slide tackle from Ira Baron. I'm not sure how Montagnu was on side there, but we will take it. But yeah, obviously, with the World Cup being in November uh, slash December, the Champions League matches have been every week and we've had a Premier League game as well. So our fixture congestion has just been, I mean, it's just been pretty ridiculous. And it's been a little bit of a struggle, to be honest, rotating the side and keeping everyone fresh. But I think we've done a pretty good job of it so far. And our performance in both the league and the Champions League has proven that as Ira Baron hits the bar from the edge of the box. That would have been a beautiful way to put us 2-0 uh, up here as McCalmont takes a corner. It is headed clear, but Ira Baron picks it up on the edge of the box. But he is he is tackled, but the ball forward from Fulham is... I mean, it's not a great one. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit here, a little bit far out. Ira Baron breaking forward, has a strike from the edge of the box. But uh, yeah, it sails a fair way wide. And interestingly, in this game, we've had very, very little possession in comparison. Well, 37% possession, percent possession is not a lot, but it's, obviously we're normally very, very dominant in possession. But we are still creating plenty of decent chances. And obviously we do have the one goal lead, which is the most important part. And there we go. Leandro Garcia scores what I believe is his first ever Premier League goal. I, met, I was talking about him before the game saying now he's, he's been unlucky. And I'd like to see a little bit more from him as well. Because even when he has played, he's not performed quite how I'd expected him to. But coming in from that left-hand side, obviously he's got that natural striker's instinct. He is a striker. He is a goal scorer. And that is what we like to see. We chip in a lot of goals from the wing, like you saw Galeno last season. Mikic has scored a lot of goals this season, so I don't feel like he's too disadvantaged in terms of his goal scoring playing on the wing, but there is half-time. We've got a healthy 2-0 lead. I'm happy with the way things are going. Keep it up. Don't do anything different. By the way, at the moment, we are currently sat two points off of uh, <laughs> two points off of first place, which is ridiculous, to be honest. It's pretty mind-blowing, but so far, nothing has happened of note in this second half, and as I say that, Fulham have a, a free... A, a throw in. I've gone through everything there, deep in our territory. But the ball does go and finds its way out to uh, Brian on this left hand side, crosses it, and poof, it's just crept 
over the bar. Who's their left back? Oh, is it Joe Bryant? Yeah, it's Joe Bryant, the normal left back for them in real life. And with that being said, there is only what well, there's only 20 minutes left. So we'll look at making a change or two. Um, there's not really any changes that I want to make here. Um, I guess I'll get Mikic on that right hand side. You know what? Let's get Mahoney Wilkes up top. Give Montagna a little bit of a rest. He's been playing playing very well recently, scoring a lot of goals. I think with his goal today, that makes it what six goals in three games, which we do love to see. But Mahoney Wilkes has been getting more and more football. Very very nice little player, as you can't really see all of his attributes there because uh, they were covered up by a little box. Anyway, throwing Garcia on the ball now. Ira Baron goes back to Kenny, the centre half. Goes all the way back to Pavlenka in goal. Finds Sistana in lots of space. Can he find a pass? He drops it off to McCalmont, who finds Dallas out on the right-hand side. Goes out to Mikic. Is he going to beat his man? He does indeed. I thought he was going to try uh, pass it off to Dallas, but uh, it ends up going nowhere. And Fulham clear it, but only as far as Kenny. We just return possession over again. Now Leif Davis to McCalmont. Finds Bogus back to McCallum on Ira Barron. Lovely little triangle there from the free central midfielders. Garcia's through on goal. What a strike. And it just finds its way over the crossbar. And unfortunately, not the back of the net. But as we come back to it, Seri over the free kick for Fulham. It's played in. And what on earth has happened there? <sighs> well, given the goal that we scored in the first half, I can't be... Uh, can't be too disappointed with that. It's headed in from Goyak, Goyak, Gojak, and then Mayer is there to uh, just help his header into the back of the net. Leaf Davis, by the way, is really struggling, but there's not really anyone I want to bring on in place of him. It's Garcia. Finds McCalmont in the middle. Can we uh, can we secure the game? Get ourselves a third goal. Give us a two-goal lead with just moments left. McCalmont finds Ira Baron. Ira Baron, that's a poor ball, and it is cleared, but Bogus picks up the clearance. Now Kenny, back to Garcia on his left-hand side. Great touch to get past his man, but the man recovers. He gets the ball in, it's headed clear. Iri Baron, what a strike! Alejandro Iri Baron on the volley, into the far corner. My goodness, what a hit, son. What a hit. So let's just have a little look at that in 3D, shall we? See here, Garcia gets the ball in, it's headed clear. Good header, but straight to the feet of Iri Baron. Hits it first time and makes no mistake finding that bottom corner and surely that is it surely that's the game time is ticking away just moments left and there we have it full time a 3-1 victory that sees us move up into third place in the league we really recovered that possession by the way I think we we're at 39 percent at half time and uh, we finished with 50 percent possession you'd love to see it and uh, well it's a good way to go into the international break is that a good way to have our little have a little break, let's see. Ira Barron is on for 7k a week. Oh dear, oh dear. Not that he, uh, not that he doesn't deserve it. Just a uh, daily uh, <coughs> daily Ira Barron appreciation um, chat. I just love him so much. He's so good for 18 years old. Valued at 13 million. He's only on 4.6k a week. He can have that 7k a week. I should probably think about getting him, in, getting him a new contract soon since it's going to be expiring uh, at the end of next season. But that's potentially something to do uh, during the international break. And oh, Peter Mahoney Wilkes is getting a pay increase as well. He's going to be going up to 1.8k. Fuming. <laughs> yeah, to actually score a goal for me in the league, which is a little bit disappointing. But he, uh, he scored a goal in the Carabao Cup for me this season. So he's not gone goalless. Ira Barron on form as Legion I had score easy victory and he wants an improved deal for Ira Barron so uh, well I'll I'll settle that <laughs> off camera but like I said we do now have our break we don't play again until Boxing Day so I mean I'll probably come back part way through January I don't I, this season has gone on a long time already I think I've had like five episodes in the first what like 13 league games worth of the season so yeah I probably will play a little bit into it maybe to the City game or maybe just to Arsenal, Liverpool, something like that. Um, maybe some January transfers to come in there. But anyway, that is where I am going to finish off today's episode. As always, thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I'll catch you in the next episode.